Thank you. Our stories, as alike or as different as they are from one another, invariably like a Grimm's fairy tale, spill us into that enchanted malevolence of a forest with all its thorns and demons and weird, unnavigable, never-ending blackness that seems as if it can't help but destroy us. And sometimes it does, in which case we never find out how the end of our particular story goes, and that's really fucking shitty. But weirdly enough, most times it doesn't, and in burning us down to the ground, it gives us a newness of insight we couldn't have claimed until we were slashed away from the bullshit we'd been carrying with us. The characters in my story, those who gave me enough light to see me through my own haunted segment, are heroes of love, without whose existence I might just have, in a fit of self-flagellation and pity, been stupid enough to erase the scrawls of my subsequent chapters. And though I thank the many friends and family who brought me back shuddering and stunned to the other side of my tale, I'd like to particularly illuminate here the Wrights family, my hands-on uber champions of light who really got me through it all. Thanks, gang. I love you all. And here's something extra that's not in the Spiritual Slob original book. Let's just call it sequel, prequel, bullshit and stuff. Now, I'm just going to... Uh, <laughs> one sec. Um, my life is not great. Uh, and, and that thorny forest still goes on. We all have our challenges. And, and that's the truth. And most uh, spiritual self-help books are full of shit about that. They dangle a carrot in front of you saying, well, oh, you can be everything, you can be everything. But, you know, I've got this other book that's going to deal with, with the shit that you, you, you haven't dealt with because you're actually never really going to get there. And I hate that shit. So this book has been written as, as a kind of antidote to that because we are where we need to be. And sometimes it's the bullshit, the awful stuff, the being painted into a corner or, or not knowing what to do being broke as a fucking revolving door joke like I am uh, currently. Um, th- these are not things I'm trying to fix here. We're trying to get you to look at who you are and the world in a different way and to, from ground zero, reclaim your power because we're all in tricky times. And the best way of, of doing stuff to change it is to realize that God, Bambi, Trixie part of the universe that's you and see that that coffee cup moving it from one side to the other may be the biggest act of power that you are prepared to do, but it's still an act of God. And, and that's all I'm going to say about that because um, hopefully you enjoyed this audio book. And I have actually started probably the only other book besides like a little helpful workbook that I'm probably going to pull together if I'm not lazy. Um, and this is just one little chapter that in, in the light of what I've just said uh, is the first chapter of whatever the fuck the title of, of that next book is going to be, Spiritual Slob Bullshit, probably. Title, Empathy and Bullshit Like That. Imagine all the physical and mental agony, the heartbreak, the torturous treachery, the stupid, stupid mistakes, doors slamming shut, the unexpectedly rotten choices, really bad moves, reckless slip-ups, personal letdowns, upheaval, endless head-bashing, uselessly against the wall, numbing mediocrity, and decades-long striving to get to what seemed to end up as nothing but brick walls and illusion, and just breathe it all in. Imagine that it was actually not bullshit at all, but the very things you wanted. In fact, you needed it, and you yourself decided to make it all happen. Look at it, feel it, love it up, and just turn it all on its head as something you absolutely fucking hated to the very adventure that tickles your gizmos. What if this sick, stupid, endless mystery tour of idiotic self-harming was the very thing you desired that from one perspective might seem a ridiculous decision to pull yourself away from a journey that carried you like some distant, uncaring emperor on one of those carriage thingies on poles lifted by the sweat of well-dressed minions through an adoring but untouching crowd. To that journey you now sense was the real journey you wanted. The gutsy, messy, tangible, 
tactile, sticky, yummy road to empathy. If that word causes an instinct to create nasty gouges in your being, annoying as it is, I hear you. 